It's been a while I started a live video being emotional and almost speechless. Um, it wasn't in my plans to do a live this today uh, in this direction. I wanted to do a live today on self-love, you know, because of the Valentine's Day hype. And um, I wanted people to kind of narrow it down to what's most important loving yourself um, and then something happened and uh, I was like okay you need to put the two and two you need to put the two together that is self-love and suicide and uh, so yes my name is Maria Banga and um, I'm a motivational speaker I'm a psychotherapist I'm an inspirational author you know um, I'm the Global Mental Health Network Rep for Cameroon and for Africa, Regional Rep for Africa. So I'm really into mental health and relational wellness. And um, I saw a post, I think it was since last night, I don't know, but I saw it this morning. Good morning, everyone. I saw it this morning about a, a young lady in Dubai, Cameroonian, who, you know, died by suicide and... Um, the reasons alleged by the people writing the articles are that her fiance or you know he she caught him kind of like cheating on her you know and they had just celebrated their traditional marriage i think in december something like that or i, I it was just so much for me to read this morning and one thing that caught my attention was some comments like you know, I can't kill myself for a man or for a woman or for stuff. And I was like, because I have been there, although I didn't go through, uh, I know for a fact that this is not about the man. It is about the girl, the woman, and it is about how the person felt about themselves in that situation or at that moment. It's not the first time the man has done that to her, so it's not like... Uh, she she's not used to the man being a jerk you know some people sometimes say it just happened like that and it was such a shock but since this man has done it before maybe in that house maybe elsewhere that's what the article says so it's not like she's like what can this man not show me again but i think it was the realization of how messed up and miserable her life is and will continue to be if she stays alive you know you you some people will say god forbid the devil is a liar all of that oh you cannot be defending somebody who has committed suicide in some countries i even hear that it's a crime like they'll wake you up from your death and lock you in prison i don't know but as a suicide attempt survivor a suicide survivor in 2009 i have talked about it over and over again i was even pregnant so it wasn't just, it wasn't that the man, he didn't even do any particular thing that particular moment. It was not him. It was me. I was just fed up with my life the way it was. And for me, it was like the best way to pay him back for having treated me and made me become this useless and this reckless woman who is living this kind of terrible and shameful and all kind of life is to kill myself in that house. And I went as far as picking up a knife going into my room. But enough for that baby in my womb, I will not be here today. So when somebody when, when somebody dies by suicide, I feel it. And then I feel more the comments people make, sometimes out of ignorance, sometimes out of, well, you know, I'm better off, I'm alive. So, well, sometimes out of, I don't know. But I'm just thinking, uh, we just have to keep talking. I was watching... Um, a live video yesterday still on this topic of suicide but more the focus on men because it looks like it is more of men who go all the way and commit the suicide you know women do too but the the statistics show that 
more of men. You know, men are the ones who go extreme. So if he wants to jump over the bridge, he's jumping. If he wants to pull the trigger, he's pulling. If he wants to do anything, he's doing. You know, women, we might start and then panic or something can happen and then, or we might call last minute and stuff like that. So if a woman actually goes through, then there's something. I, I looked up some small research, you know, um, I put there, a, you know, these studies are things that they do with, um, with people and then they publish it so that we academicians and practitioners and all that, we can use them to kind of do more research and stuff like that. When I talk, I like to keep it real. I want to, you know, stuff like that. But sometimes it's like I have to use these statistics, even though we don't have them in Cameroon, because people are not going to tell you, oh, I wanted to commit suicide, or even if they come to talk to you as a therapist, well, they have to sign a consent form for you to use their, their you know, to talk to use them as a statistics, clearly. If they don't do that, you can only mention it like that, but that's not credible, you know, but if you could, so as much as I have data, I cannot use that data to do a paper now until the people sign and say, yes, you can use my story to do a data like clearly like that. So that is what we need to understand. So I want to read some of this um, uh, from this article, relationship between self-esteem and suicide. Now, self-love is the is the apex when you have self-esteem you can only love yourself because when you esteem something this is very important for me i, I can't walk in here where i can't but i love to work with the ac on so i hold this thing in high esteem like i keep it inside my jaw so somebody will not just come and the first thing they'll pick is the thing and everything so i am going to love this thing i'm like i think about it how much it costs me i don't want to lose this and so it's so precious to me and stuff even my phone sometimes when i don't see my phone i'm like i'm shaking stuff like that that's how it should be when you esteem yourself when you hold yourself in high esteem like me for example now right i hold myself in so much high esteem and so i love myself i admire myself i take pictures of myself i check my face i you know i use the lotion that can be good on my body i wear my nice dress i eat my nice food do all of those things but if you don't have that self-esteem for whatever reason we are going to find out some reasons then you're going to neglect yourself and it'll be easy for you to think like there's no reason for me to even be alive you don't care about yourself i did not for me it was putting up that smile back in those 2000s and whatsoever 2006 up to 2011 when i left that marriage it was like put up the show smile for people smile but now i don't smile for people i smile for myself like if I even put my picture and nobody says beautiful, me, I know me, I'm beautiful, right? So I just put it there. I love to do it, you know, but for some people, it is not, it doesn't just come easy. And I know what I'm talking about because I have been there. It doesn't come easy. Why? Because sometimes we grow up counting on other people to make us valuable, to make us worthy, to make us hold ourselves in any esteem. And once they drop us, we feel like, oh my God, my life is over. And that's why this Valentine's Day hype, I'm shifting my focus deliberately to self-love and trying to encourage people to look at it like a day to celebrate how much you love yourself or to think about it and to say, hey, this is high time I think about myself. How much do I love myself? What can I do for myself? Must it be because of somebody, bay or boo or whatsoever? If there's nothing, you don't even need to wait. If there's nobody, there's nobody. And even if there's somebody, once I was in Brussels, I left my boyfriend and went to Paris on the 13th of February. We spent Valentine's Day there with my cousin, went out and had a great time, and then went back to Brussels on the 15th. He was okay with that. That was the beginning of me really realizing how much it's about me loving myself. Me. And not that we will be together on Valentine's Day for what? And if we are not together, does that mean that we don't love each other? That is where the hype is coming from. And that is where some people can give up when that person you held in so much high esteem and put all your love in or thought that that person should love you. They don't or they cheat on you or they treat you the way this man probably treated this girl because it might not just be about the cheating. Do you know the abuse? 
Do you know the verbal, the physical, the emotional abuse? Do you know the financial abuse? I know a lady who was killed recently by the boyfriend, um, a custom lady. I went to visit a friend yesterday and they know this lady. The lady was actually the secretary to her husband. So when I saw that story on Facebook, I didn't know anybody would know that lady. So I just said, huh, I beg, God forbid. Then I see people who know this lady. And so they tell me the story like people who know. And I'm like, oh my goodness. This lady had been with this man for seven years. And they had been, she had been investing. The man is a military officer or something B or whatever. The story was there on social media. So she had been investing, giving money to the man. She bought the man the car the man was driving. You know, sometimes we women, I said there's a thin line between love and foolishness. Sometimes we are foolish. And I would say it me myself, I had been foolish, well and proper. That's why I'm not foolish anymore. I'm like, no, I've been foolish enough as far as this thing of relationship is concerned. You invest money in somebody, you buy them a car so people should see and say, hey, your guy, your man has a car. They don't know that you're the one who bought the car. Of course, they will not even believe because you, know, you cannot have anything. It's the man who should be giving you all of those things. So this lady has invested, they have saved money to buy a house or they bought the land or whatsoever. In all this time, because they're not living like in the same city, she does not even know that the man is married elsewhere. Can you imagine several years? This is not a year, say. So by the time she realized and there was something and stuff, and then she told the man she didn't want the relationship anymore. The man said, don't worry, I'm coming to pick you up. With, let's, let's talk about this thing and everything. And then he picked her up and took her somewhere and killed her. The Herbaria was yesterday. So this is it. It is possible. But why was she staying with that man for this long? And then she investing in all of those things. Well, she thought that man was her definition. That man was her God. That man was this. That man was that. It can happen to a man like it can happen to a woman. Thank God that story of that man in Australia was fake news. But some men have done it. Um, last year, was it not this man in Ohio who went and shot the, the ex-wife? And then kills himself. Why? Why? We can't understand anymore. They are gone. But the truth is that they, 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 they just got so frustrated and hopeless in life. And then the best option they could think of at that particular time was taking themselves out. Frankly speaking, they honestly, and sometimes you say to yourself, oh man, go die. So if I kill myself, I take myself out, so what? Sometimes it gets that bad and that is your reasoning. And people who haven't gotten there, what my sister calls hit rock bottom, people who haven't hit rock bottom, they will not understand. And sometimes the best thing to do when you don't understand is not add insensitivity to the wound. You know, sometimes it's also an opportunity to kind of teach people, kind of share, you know, but sometimes it hurts to read people make those kind of comments. Sometimes you don't even know how bad it is what about people who commit suicide for other reasons? Alexander McQueen, for example, this great designer. Oh my goodness, who did not want to wear an Alexander McQueen? I myself had a few of his suits that I actually got people to send to me from the US and from UK just because I wanted to have. Beautiful. But the man hung himself in his wardrobe. He was gay. He wasn't in a relationship or he wasn't, somebody didn't cheat on him and all of that. So what are you going to say? That is why it is very important that we stop thinking that it is all about the other person. It is you. Your mental health is not good. You are not in that position to even make those right decisions anymore. So what does this study say? Depression, hopelessness, and low self-esteem are implicated as vulnerability factors for suicide ideation. So how do you get depressed? Many of us must have gotten depressed at one point or other in our lives. And we all know the different things that led us to this state. Life happens. Things happen. Business collapses. COVID has come. Things have stopped. Wala, left and right, all of that. People will get depressed. And when you are depressed, you are not thinking right then. You are not even thinking anymore. You, should, you don't even want to think. That is how bad depression can happen and get you. To not even want to think so you don't want to even live what's the point living if i cannot even think if i cannot even get up and go and pray and just be the person i was before there's no point living do you hear 
of course you become hopeless that's the point i wrote there hopeless to hopeful i have been hopeless in life before me maria banga sitting here and i have no problem sharing my experience it's in seven books i write i talk all of that and it's gotten me to where i am today because i decided to be honest about it and to embrace it and to recognize all of those signs i can sit here today and say maybe never again or hopefully never again but i know what it is and i don't feel that anybody should be ashamed to hit rock bottom or to get to become hopeless and stuff it has happened the other day i shared a video of a man in the u.s he's in his 60s but he talks about his depression you lose your marriage you lose your house you lose your kids you lose your job oh my goodness how much shock can you take you lose your brother you lose your your husband you lose your mother you lose that trauma it was the trauma for this young lady it wasn't the act of meeting the man if the man is already a jerk he's already a jerk but the trauma the brain on free mode thank you darling i once want to put my brain on fire it's like you don't know where to find cold water to put you cannot think your head is like hit it hit it hit it The association of self-esteem with suicide ideation after controlling for depressed mood and hopelessness was examined. This is a scientific study, remember, and it was done in a psychiatric hospital. And they, 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 they used, they worked with 338 psychiatric outpatients. The completed measures of self-esteem, suicide ideation, hopelessness, and depression. So you have indexes to measure all of these things. Psychiatric outpatients mean people like you and I who go to a psychiatric hospital or a support center, you know, to get help for whatsoever reason. People come to me here, right? I'm a psychotherapist. So, of course, I could be attached to a psychiatric ward and people will say those are mad people. Not necessarily. I have gone also. I have gone. And then what if people call you mad people? You're going to look for help. To be better so you are the hero not the ones who pretend like everything is good for them they don't have no problem in life oh their self-esteem is over the moon they are this they are that they know it all so they say it all and they laugh at people who are struggling that is stigmatizing they shouldn't be your problem go and get your help let them stay there in their i don't know wherever her level they are so they did this study with 338 people and self-esteem was operationalized as beliefs about oneself you know self-based self-esteem what do you believe about yourself i am nothing without this relationship i have invested so much to lose it like this it hurts how many of us want to walk into our rooms or into our homes and meet our man red-handed there with a woman look it happened to gail king Gail King is Oprah's friend. She, she came back from a vacation earlier with her kids and she opened the door and she met her husband on the sofa there with another woman. It's there on Oprah on the network. Go and watch those things. But she was strong. Probably because she, she knew, I mean, she could call her friend Oprah. She could walk back out, you know. Some people have handled things differently. She went back out, got her kids into the car, and just drove her away, calmed down first, and then came, and I don't even know that she left the man right away or tried to talk about it. That's her own way. Some other people would throw hot water on them, do whatsoever. That, that is why it is so important to learn mental health management, crisis management, anger management, emotional intelligence, all of those things. And stop feeling like, I cannot. I know it all. Me, I'm so strong. Some people are not in any relationship today, not because people don't approach them, but because they don't want, they, they are still thinking about the last experience, even if it's donkey years ago. They don't want them trauma. I'm talking about people. Look, I am one. I don't want me trauma. I don't want headache. You know, so as much as I would not mind hanging out with the man, having a good time, you know, whatever, all of that, I don't want to commit. I don't want, I just feel like there is going to get to a point where there, there will be some friction and tension. I don't need that distraction right now in my life. So that is my sacrifice. I was telling somebody yesterday, no, 
I, I'm sacrificing getting into a committed relationship now. I'm giving myself five more years or four more years. Let me kind of put things in place. This is what I'm not the only one to sacrifice. Barbara Waters, I was listening to her master class with Oprah this morning, and she said, Well, after the first marriage in work, she just realized marriage was not for her. She put her job first, traveling all over the world, doing all of those interviews and everything. Larry King had how many wives? Why did the wives not stay? The wives themselves say, Larry King said if he gets a call from CNN and from his wife, he would choose the call from CNN. So he ended up sacrificing his relationships. They were not even sleeping in the same bedroom. The articles are there. So life is all about choices. And knowing that each choice has a consequence. But sometimes when you're, when you're, you, you, what am I going to call it? When your cognition becomes so attacked, and so uh, uh, you lose so much confidence. It does, it, it, you are not thinking right anyway. You are like, I can't go. Go to where? That's why people stay in abusive relationships. They're going to where? They can't even take that step. Somebody came to me last week. I'm telling you about me. Somebody came to me. The very day even, or the very next day, they were back. They were right back into that relationship. I work with people, so I know. And that's why sometimes I don't just get carried up with the hype. Somebody can say, oh no, he's killing me. I can't take this anymore. Uh, okay, as soon as you finish talking, before you know it, three hours later or the next day, the stories are there plenty. So, um, uh, uh, about yourself what do you believe about yourself and beliefs about how other people regard you and this is another very important thing beliefs about how other people regard you people are so concerned about how other people see them how other people oh you know some people will say oh you're putting all of those pictures because you love all of those likes and everything of course i do to a certain extent but it's not like without them my life stops but for some people, it is that. I, I watch one thing on YouTube, one Kenyan girl who is a social media influencer or whatever. She herself was saying she lives for those likes. She gets up in the morning and she's just thinking about what she's going to be posting. And she's strolling and making sure she gets the like. And she's asking people, please like, like, like. She's attending all the, the, the glam and the parties and the everything, you know, and trying to look her best. Another one interviewed by Oprah says she's hooked to plastic surgery because she keeps thinking, People don't like this. Uh, it's not be good. It's not perfect. It's this and that. Can you imagine? So all her money goes into plastic surgery. So it's not. A, I, I'm not saying that plastic surgery is bad, but when you become addicted to plastic surgery for the likes, come on. But sometimes we need we need to be compassionate to work with people to encourage people to hold space for people. Some people will be criticizing this young lady today. May her soul rest in peace. How many people reach out to her or help space for her or encourage her to seek professional help when she must have reached out to them the first or the second time this man did whatever he did? Let's be honest. We are Africans. If somebody calls you and say, hey, my husband is cheating on me or my wife is cheating on me, what are some of us going to say? What did we grow up learning to say? When well, mommy just die hard. Am I lying? When well, I saw the thing there. When well, no, just don't no mind you. Why can't you go like to have a conversation and say, okay, I'm just listening to you. Just talk to me. And then maybe you can go to the root cause. Why are you insecure? Why do you think this relationship is the only thing that matters in your life? How can you make this other person know they are hurting you? And if they don't change, well, what can you do? What are the tools? What is all of that? Say therapy. Who will go for therapy? Even if I say free, who will come? And of course, I will not say free. So when the dead go, they are gone. What can we do? Learn from their experiences and work on ourselves. And then, well, me, what can I do? Also share. That's all. But take care of myself, you know, like my late brother used to say, everybody's neck carries their head. So I'm not carrying anybody's head on my neck. And my head, my body is just a knock for me like this. So I cannot. But if you need the help and I can lead you in the right direction, hold space for you some, listen to you, you reach out. And if I see somebody really looking like they're going through a tough time, I've done that for some people, a lot of people. I reach out and I let, just let them know I am here. But I don't promise to people, hi everybody, 
I don't promise to people I can be here for them and not be there for them. You know, but sometimes let's let's just be let's just show some more compassionate and let us love our own selves. And stop counting on people, spouse, husband, father, mother, child, all of that. No, me, now like this. Somebody was like, well, please stay at home. Gabby is alone at home now. Stay at home with him to try to supervise herself. I said, no, I have my own things to do. My life is not about Gabby. Gabby is 11. So I talk with Gabby and I say, Gabby, you'll be responsible for yourself today. The office is not fine. There's anything you come. I make sure there's breakfast, there's lunch. The others will be back from school at 12. In the meantime, let me come to the office and do the things I want to do. I walk all alone. I have so much to do. I took all of that upon myself. I thought somebody would help me. There's nobody. Okay, I organize myself. And if I have to give up my Saturday and my Sunday, nah, that's my choice. But I wouldn't give that up for a man, for a relationship, and then suffer or risk being traumatized all over again, either because of emotional negligence, sexual negligence, financial negligence, whatsoever, whatsoever. Ah. So what did this article conclude? They said each dimension of self-esteem was negatively associated with suicide ideation after controlling for depression and hopelessness. Can you imagine? Yes. Each dimension of self of self-esteem was negatively associated with suicide ideation when controlling for depression and hopelessness when you don't feel good about yourself when you think people don't like you barbara waters was saying she of all the presidents she had interviewed nixon is the one who really made her think this man wanted to be liked by people at all costs even the people in the studio the cameraman that's how he was just there trying to make sure everybody liked him. How can everybody like you? And even if they do, so what? And some will fake it. And then the day you realize the truth, what are you going to do? Kill yourself because they don't like you. Okay, of the two dimensions of self-esteem, other base self-esteem was the more robust predictor of suicide ideation. This finding suggests that even in the context of depression and hopelessness, Low self-esteem may add to the risks for suicide ideation. And I put the link to the article there. So that is it. So please, 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 people, please. You, No one can love you more than you love yourself. No one. No one. If you can't call your partner your king, your queen, your glory, your crown, your everything. And you know also the way life is. One day that partner may go. They may die before you. Is your life going to come to an end? Some people, it's so hard to pick up. But you have to pick up. If you don't pick up, what are you going to do with your life? You have kids, for example. You're a widow, a widower. You won't live again. So I smile. I mean, when I see some of my friends who lost their spouses or spouse, and a few years later, well, either they remarry or they get into other relationships. Gone are those days when people expect people who lose their husbands, for example, to stay there, widowhood, wear the black or the blue, tie your head, and do that forever and ever. Amen. For what? Self-love is very important. Very, very, very important. If not, you'll be living a miserable life. And then you can get depressed. And who knows? Suicide ideation. Before you know it, well, something sets you off. And then you take yourself out. And then who has lost in the end? Who? You, you, you are gone. You are the one who is gone. Your family will suffer. Your mother will cry. People will cry. People will condemn the person they can blame for that and all of that. But, well, you are gone. So is that the way you want to go? Those of us who are still alive. Do we want to take ourselves out? Before, people will not talk about suicide. But now it's time to talk about suicide. It happens. It has been happening for years. I remember as a kid. The first time I heard about suicide was in my own extended family. It was hush, 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 hush. Something happened. But I cannot forget up to this day that first case of suicide I had. And I did feel sorry for that mama. I, I, I did not even know her, like, personally. But I could just... People said they were narrating the way it happened. Hush. But I was just, like, imagining what could lead a mama to do all of that and then go for me suicide who knows mama is gone
but today we can talk about it let's talk about it and let's not throw stones on those who could not or who were not as resilient or who didn't love themselves enough anymore maybe you know we don't know it all okay happy valentine's day everybody thank you so much everybody who joined uh i'm going to put this on youtube too this was not my idea of self-love today encouraging us but then um the case came up and uh, this is what we do right so um thank you all for the comments please um reach out to somebody today you know you mustn't have a partner you, my son you know everybody my mom my sister my you know just a friend anybody love is not only loving romantic love no what reach out to your father wish him happy it's a day to celebrate love whether we believe in the day or not whatever the calendar did with that day for me it's okay i'm getting into the hype just because i want to celebrate the love i have for myself i've never done it this way before like it's so full this year it's just so full and i'm just so grateful to be where i am and so i share this god bless us all